I'd like to welcome you to our presentation today on Basis International School Guangzhou. I'll be speaking about the school and some additional insights. My name is Tim Smith, and um, in the presentation today, we'll be covering some insights that we think are uh, insightful, as well as uh, important uh, to hear about Basis International Bilingual Schools. We'll be highlighting our school in Guangzhou. And then we'll be touching on some of the aspects of the expat package, the benefits, some of the visa and other requirements and working with Basis International Bilingual Schools. And then we'll have Q&A at the end. So if you have questions as we're going through sharing some of the insights, uh, feel free at the, uh, the bottom of your screen, you should be able to see a Q&A link. You can go ahead and enter questions in there and uh, we'll be keeping an eye on that. And then we'll answer the questions at the end of the presentation. So depending on where you're joining us from, whether it's uh, uh, morning time in uh, Asia or if you're joining us this evening in uh, the Western Hemisphere, we welcome you in joining us today. Uh, for today's presentation, uh, again, my name is Tim Smith. I'm the Vice President of Global Talent uh, for Basis International Schools. We'll also be joined by Dr. Erica Smeltzer, who is the Head of School at Basis International School Guangzhou, along with Diana martinez Yagi, who is the International Recruiter. Uh, working specifically and directly with uh, Basis International School Guangzhou, sharing some of the uh, insights there today. So to start things off, um, I want to share some insights about Basis International Bilingual Schools. First off, uh, some things that really guide our schools is our mission. The mission is something that's actually quite important to us. It's not something that just kind of sits on the wall as a good idea, but uh, something that really guides a lot of our um, actions and uh, the outcomes that we're seeking. So to speak to a couple of the pieces on there, um, Basis International School's mission is to provide students with a transformative early education and K-12 education uh, with a cutting edge basis curriculum through exceptional teaching and faculty mentoring. We'll produce graduates who have broad intellectual capabilities, international perspectives, critical thinking proficiency and creative problem solving skills to be future leaders, uh, leaders in their future academic and uh, professional lives. A couple of things that um, are really quite important to us when it comes to the teachers and people that work with us and really accomplishing this mission is that we really are focused on exceptional teaching. And so we're looking for people who really have a great passion for teaching, want to be very effective in the classroom. And that's really supplemented and driven through the faculty mentoring that we do have a uh, focus on. This is something that's really important to us. And one thing that uh, we really like to uh, say and commit to kind of our employment promise is that um, by coming to Basis International Schools and teaching with us, you will be a better teacher um, when you move on to whatever next step there may be than when you came and you joined us. And we really do look for individuals to enhance their craft and uh, become better teachers through being with Basis International Schools. In terms of what is unique and working with Basis International Schools, the, these are all items that have come from some of my conversations with our teachers. When I talk to them about, you know, what do you enjoy about being with BASIS? Or um, you know, why do you continue to stay with our schools? And um, these are things that come uh, very consistently and really kind of come up from our teachers. Number one is the collaborative learning environment. You really get the chance to work with other exceptional teachers that come from various uh, teaching approaches, different curricula, different parts of the world. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we, are, we really do look for people who are very passionate about teaching and certainly passionate about their discipline. And um, so a lot of times I hear, you know, I work with such interesting people. Um, they just have so much, you know, interest and drive and passion for what they're doing. Um, I've uh, heard multiple times, you know, this, this is just the most exceptional group of, uh, of colleagues I've had the chance to work with. So, you know, you would have the opportunity to join some really quite uh, phenomenal individuals to be uh, working with, to collaborate with, to learn from, to share with, and really to grow with in uh, the basis environment. Secondly, uh, the academic culture. We really do have some fairly high expectations in terms of the academics uh, for our students, but certainly also for our teachers. Um, sometimes I, uh, I do hear from teachers where, uh, you know, they say, wow, you know, I, uh, um, I know the basis has a very academic culture, but um, I've actually been surprised at how, uh, um, um, how high some of those uh, outcomes are. And I really kind of had to step up my game 
to be able to you know teach at the level that the students are expected to uh, to be at. So um, we do have a curriculum that does encourage rigor and achievement. Um, we really do have true academic uh, focused schools. You really get a chance to teach and focus on that intellectual curiosity that we do love to have uh, so vibrant within our schools. Uh, third is the basis network. You know, being a part of a large group of schools uh, really um, offers both, um, you know, future growth opportunities. Um, but more importantly to that, uh, you know, it, it's a network that is very highly respected. Um, we're growing rapidly, uh, continuing to open uh, new schools as well. Um, and uh, that offers uh, great career growth opportunities as we do continue to, uh, to build and grow individuals that want to take on new responsibilities or, uh, you know, move to a new location. You don't have to conduct a whole new career search to find a next step. You can do that already within the network. Um, we do look to individuals to uh, move within the network and uh, do give preference to individuals um, uh, that we do have with us. Lastly, one of the things is constant that I hear about is um, the basis students are just such a pleasure to teach. They're engaged, they're motivated, they want to learn, they want to excel. And uh, I always hear from teachers that, uh, you know, they've, if they've offered student hours at other schools they've been with, uh, sometimes it's the first time that students actually show up. And it's not just, you know, one or two show up, but they come, they want to learn, they want to engage with their teacher, and uh, they really want to find great insights uh, within your discipline. And so it's something that, um, again, the teachers say, it's, uh, it really is a joy to teach these students who really want to work hard and really want to learn and, uh, and do some great things. In terms of um, you know, if, if you aren't currently in China or haven't been to China, um, sometimes uh, people are pleasantly surprised when they arrive in China to find out just how convenient modern living is in China. Uh, where we have our schools, uh, they are very modern cities. They have cutting edge technology. Um, they're extremely safe. Uh, things are uh, uh, very convenient. Transportation is easy. The public transportation is easy. The subways are, are beautifully clean, um, trains come every few minutes. So um, things are really quite convenient. Also, you know, living, being able to order, shop, things online, being able to pay directly with your phone, whether you go out, uh, you know, shopping or you go to a restaurant or, you know, somewhere else, you know, everything is done very conveniently through your phone. Um, great, very easy, convenient, uh, modern living to be able to find in China. Um, secondly, uh, one of the things I hear a lot is that uh, people who have gone to China, they really appreciate being there in a culture that really deeply values education. Teachers are so highly respected and um, respected by the students, respected by the families, tremendous amount of support that the teachers have from the families. Uh, they really do appreciate um, you know, the support, the encouragement um, that they do get from the families and the students that they're teaching. And lastly, of course, um, being able to participate in a, a new culture and become a part of a very dynamic, uh, growing environment, um, having the chance to really blend both Eastern and Western philosophies, experiences, and especially being a part of um, you know, a country that is becoming um, you know, so prominent within the global stage, um, being able to have an impact on these young students who will become future leaders within this great country is certainly a unique opportunity that many people have uh, specifically spoken about and uh, enjoy having the opportunity to, uh, to impact. All right, with those um, few things talking about uh, what is interesting or unique about working with BASIS, what is uh, unique about being in China, we do, want to, uh, we do want to speak specifically about the school that we're highlighting today. So I'd like to uh, welcome Dr. Erica Smeltzer to um, speaking with us. So Erica, uh, so great to have you on with us today. I'm um, looking forward to uh, hearing some of your insights to share about uh, yourself and the school and uh, in your city. Great, thank you so much, Tim. Um, I think that was a lovely overview of our campuses and our culture. Um, speaking of exceptional colleagues, which Tim mentioned, um, I've been working with Mr. Tim Smith for about seven years now. Diana, not not quite as long. Um, we've only recently been started our work together, but I think they're excellent examples of the type of quality and intellect that you get to work with here at BASIS. 
Um, a little bit about me. Uh, so I have a PhD in literature. I began my life in education as an academic, teaching and working in universities. Um, but I, I you know, found my calling in K through 12 education, which some of you may have known you wanted to be a teacher since you were, you were very young. Um, I found my calling actually with BASIS um, in K through 12. I've worked with BASIS as an English teacher. Um, I've taught grades as early as four and as high as 12. I've taught the entire spectrum, primary, middle, and high school. Um, and I've put on just about all the hats that somebody can have within the school. I've worked as a director of academic programs, a head of middle school, a head of high school, and most recently head of, high, head of school for both our Shenzhen campuses and now most recently our Guangzhou campus. Um, I was here for four years in China when my husband finally realized that I probably wasn't coming home anytime soon. So he's re relocated to be with me in China. Um, he works for the BASIS Network. Part of his job is um, to make sure that the lovely mission that Tim Smith talked to you about is fully integrated into all of our systems and structures. So as a family, we've committed to the network. And to be honest, we love it here. Um, we've fallen deeply in love with Guangzhou um, and in love with the schools. So this is our second city in China. And we've kind of dug in our heels and found, found our hearts home. And so we don't plan on leaving anytime soon. And when Tim was speaking, he mentioned student hours. And I, I was like, oh, well, I was reflecting on student hours that I had last week. And I sometimes, one of the questions that I like to ask teachers is, um, you know, what's, what's one of your proudest moments um, in your work when I'm doing interviews? And when he mentioned those student hours, I realized I had one of those moments just last week. Um, and I think it really is indicative of the type of students we have. So um, of course, like Tim mentioned, our student hours are full of kids and I had my office um, with my ninth grade students coming in one after the other um, and they would sit down and they would work with me and uh, suddenly I, I looked up and I realized everyone that I had worked with and finished speaking with was still in the room. Um, and I was like, well, don't you, don't you want to go home? Don't you want to leave? I mean, we've, we've been working together. What are you doing still here? And they said, well, it's just such a great academic atmosphere. Um, it's, I, I like getting my work done here um, with all these people talking about ideas. And I think for me, that was kind of the goal of our schools is uh, not just an academically rigorous curriculum, but an academic community that kind of builds on itself. Um, the curriculum is great, but the people are greater. And the kind of energy, intellect, enthusiasm that we bring to our work is really what keeps our motors running. So, I mean, a lot of you are probably thinking a couple questions, why basis, why China? Um, and I, I'll kind of address those in turn. So first, why basis? Um, it's an incredible place to grow and develop. Um, we're a growing network. There's several of these webinars um, available from different heads of school, several schools available. Um, and that means lots of potential for growth if, if you're young and ambitious and want to look, you know, some of us have our five-year plans and you want to start looking ahead. Um, it is a great place to learn and gain experience. Um, one of my most powerful professional experiences has been working in our network-wide committees and collaboration groups. Um, we've had groups that have had curriculum focuses, ways to optimize schedules, ways to optimize student mental health and wellness, um, where people from all of our campuses have come together to try to find solutions to problems we're all facing. And it, that work um, really sets you up for leadership in different ways, also to have a, a strong hand in the changes that we make in, in the network. So, um, there's lots of opportunities, formal um, and informal, to gain experience and leadership and exposure to the decision-making that goes into running a large and successful network of international schools. So I, I really do think that um, we have a lot to offer in that area. The other thing is um, recognition. I think the schools, especially in China, do a great job of recognizing the hard work that goes into teaching. Um, we mandate that all of our managers teach, so none of our managers are kind of aloof and 
ignorant of the trials and tribulations of the teacher, we all remember and know vividly um, how hard it is, how emotional it can be, and also how deeply invested you are. Um, I think that's really important. And the network in various ways recognizes that work um, and shows, shows teachers that they care. Um, care, uh, I can say our campus in Guangzhou, um, between the operational side and the academic side, shows their emotional investment in the teachers and students um, I'll, I'll show you some pictures from our, from our, our holiday celebrations later, but um, we're organizing, for example, a hot springs trip over the winter break for teachers who can't go home over Christmas and might be feeling a little glum, um, nothing like a nice hot tub to kind of wear away the winter doldrums. Um, but also over the summer, there were several trips organized by the school to help people um, you know, stay connected with friends and have an exciting summer time and um, get to know people, especially if they were new, new members of our community um, to really build relationships because we all know that's what's most important. Um, why China? So I've been in China for seven years now um, and I love it. I, I think it is exciting, amazing. It's a beautiful place to be. Um, I know that sometimes it's not always I would say equitably represented in US media, but I cannot sing its praises enough. Um, it is just incredible the way that, especially places like Guangzhou um, integrate old and new. It's a city that's over 2000 years old, um, but it also has um, incredible technology, skylines, exciting things to do. You can go to a pub to get soul food. Um, you can also go to a two Michelin star, um, like uh, kind of gourmet restaurant um, with a beefy menu. Um, it, it, it's really all there. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's been an international city for a very long time. It's full of embassies, consulates, um, and it, it has a lot of international aspects to offer. And um, one of the things that you might not know is despite having 15 million people, actually the city is quite green. It's really exceptionally beautiful. Um, and the area where our school is in Science City, um, most of the expats who live here just say that they'll never, never leave this area because it's beautifully green. Actually, right now I'm looking at my window at a green mountainside, um, but we also have um, you know, held headquarters for LG and um, companies like DJI just a hop, skip and a jump away. So it is a, an interesting place that mixes kind of the best of urban, uh, urban culture with um, green parks and areas and also the best of tradition and um, all those things that are new and exciting about, about China right now. So um, I will also echo that China deeply values education. I mean, that's felt everywhere. Um, and it's, it's a nice thing to live. You don't have to convince anyone um, that it's important for them to get a well-rounded education. All of our students come um, with that value already instilled in them. That doesn't mean they'll always do what you tell them to do exactly when you tell them to do it. And it, it certainly doesn't mean that they'll always do their homework. But um, the kind of when you sit down with parents or you sit down with students, they have clear goals and they know that you're there to support them to accomplish those goals. So it's really refreshing as an educator to be with um, families that are just so dedicated to supporting the school, to supporting you as a teacher and supporting their students. Um, could you change the slide really quick? No. So uh, these are just some more pictures of the, of the city. They're beautiful. And then I'm going to talk about uh, the school really quickly. There we go. So. Our school has about a thousand students. Um, there are a thousand amazing students. We have three buildings. Um, one is ECE and administrative. Um, the other is boarding and dining. Um, and the third is our primary academic building with primary, middle and high school. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a decently sized campus. Um, but, you know, we, we still rub shoulders with one another. It doesn't, it's certainly not vast and expansive. It is an intimate community. And um, boarding, for any of you who are, are made a little slightly anxious by that word, I know that um, sometimes people can love it uh, or, or fear it. Um, I, I kind of just want to sing its praises really quickly. I, when I came here, I had not worked in a boarding school before. And as a head of school, I mean, you think about 
you know, it's a whole new world of things that could potentially go wrong. Um, but I have to say it is one of the most amazing things. Um, and I've, I've spoken with some people about this and they always say, if you love boarding, you never leave it. And I, I don't think I ever will. I think for me, the rest of my professional educational experience will likely be in boarding schools because I think it just adds such a beautiful texture to the work you do. It becomes um, much more kind of familiar, comfortable, um, the interact, the casual interactions you have with students. Um, it, it really adds, it, 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 it is the best parts of what I love of the day, um, the day program at the schools. The, you know, bumping into students in the hallway, having a quick chat, bouncing ideas off of each other, making jokes um, that gets to extend and develop in ways that are, are beautiful and unexpected. And so I just wanted to say that really quickly and also reassure folks, our, our, our faculty aren't asked to do boarding um, obligations or duties, um, but there are opportunities if a teacher would like to pursue that. Um, so just a quick mention of the boarding. We also have a roof, rooftop tennis courts, um, a rooftop soccer pitch, two basketball courts and a track. Um, we are, have a developing, um, sports program, we're very healthily competitive um, and we love, we love our sports, whether we're playing against other schools or um, our houses within the, within the campus are playing against each other. Um, basketball is currently the most beloved sport. I'm personally a soccer fan and really pushing to get our girls soccer teams going, but we'll see how that goes. Um, next slide, please. Thanks. Uh, of course, School is not facilities, a school is kids and community. Um, and our, our students, I know that Tim mentioned this too, are just fantastic people. I love, um, I, I, I love basis kids. I've now worked at more than one basis school. Can I, so I can say it's basis kids that are awesome, um, but they're just incredibly precocious and spunky and sassy. And anyone who believes that they'll come to China and have a group of students who are, you know, working robotically or, or not able to access the creative parts of their intellect. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, you are, you are, you are uh, mistaken. The kids are creative, spunky, sassy in all the best ways. Um, they, I, I'm, I'm an English teacher. I, I'm, I, I like to believe I know my how to cross my T's and dot my I's, but I have students who will scan every single one of my slides desperate desperately waiting for me to make a mistake that they can call out. Um, it's, it's just a fun atmosphere to, to work in where you're, I mean, many times you're, you know, taking on intellects that are just as strong, if not stronger than your own and trying to keep up and it keeps you, I don't know, I, I, I don't think I'm that old, but it keeps you young and it keeps your work exciting. Um, so I, I just can't speak highly enough about our kids and we have about a thousand of them. So there's plenty of excitement to go around. I also love that we're a through school, pre-K through 12. So we have the, you know, very young to very old. And oftentimes many of our um, seniors or older students will work with our younger kids. I was at a basketball game yesterday and saw that two of our senior boys are actually coaching the girls soccer team. Um, so our uh, uh, basketball team. So our community really is, yeah. It, we like working together and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter age, you know, gender, sex. I mean, we're all kind of that we love what we do and we, um, you know, the, whether you're young or old, um, we are a big family. Uh, other thing I would like to mention for those of you with families, um, Guangzhou and especially the Guangzhou campus is really family oriented. We have a lot of families on this campus. Um, our pre-K one class is half um, staff kids. So we have, part of that is because the housing is really compatible to families. So we have large apartments, they're in really safe, beautifully um, appointed apartments with play areas for the kids, very close to the school. So you can bike to campus. Um, and our families have really kind of settled in and it's one of the things we like to cultivate. So um, I, I have my own apartment that I've fallen deeply in love with and I've, I've curated my, my little silver bicycle that I ride to campus on, but it's, it's really nice in a, 50, a city of 15 million to be able to you know, ride your bike on a bike path to campus. 
So um, it is a really interesting place. Um, and I mentioned before Science City is where the campus is located. Um, it's incredibly green despite its name. So there's parks everywhere. It's, it's the um, apartment complex where I live, where also many faculty live, Kuchun. Um, it's, it feels like you're living in a botanical garden. Um, that being said, Science City is called Science City for a reason. And we also have um, companies like DJ, DJI, um, LG. There's lots of places close by that actually partner with the school and, and take our students on trips and visits to campus. All right, next picture, please. Thank you. Um, one of the things I would like to close with um, is the teaching community. I, I think I cannot speak highly enough of the faculty. When I first joined the school, the question I asked all the key members of faculty was, what, what do you love? What, what do you want me not to touch? Like, what, what needs to stay? What's at the heart of your joy of working here? And of course, I also asked the other question, what, what needs to grow, what needs to develop? But for the first one, um, the question, the answer that everyone gave to that question was, I love the people I work with. I, hands down, every single one of them just thought that the community that we had built here at Guangzhou was absolutely essential um, to their experience and just one of the greatest joys that they have. Um, and I, I, I have to agree. I think our teachers are bright, a little bit wacky, um, ambitious. They are problem solvers. They're incredibly dedicated to their craft. Um, we have a group of people who wants to grow in their profession. Uh, we don't have anyone who feels like um, and, and I'm sure we all have the experience of this from one time or another, somebody who feels like they've made it and they know exactly how to solve the problem um, and they've figured it all out. Uh, we don't have those personalities, right? We have people who have been teaching for decades who are masters of their craft, but they're very much still invested in growing. And that's part of our professional model here at BASIS. Um, we, once you have established yourself at our school, you're on something called the growth pathway and the growth pathway doesn't end, right? It means, it. what that means is all the observation and coaching that we do with you is just about perfecting your craft and taking the next step in your development. Um, but observation and coaching is available for everybody. So that kind of self-reflectiveness, um, attention to practice, dedication to what you do is, is really central to us. And I, I took this picture, I, if you can see it, the Christmas um, garland in the walkway, that was literally, I was walking to my office on the way to do this webinar. And I, and I saw the work that the art teachers had done to decorate the campus. And yeah, it's stunning. It just feels like a winter wonderland. There were three other pictures I took, but I, I decided to only integrate one because I didn't want to bore anyone. Um, but it's, it's really lovely, the energy and care that people put in here. And I would also like to say, Basis Guangzhou, when we do something, we go all in. Well, we, we put our whole heart and souls into it. So Halloween, um, winter holidays, concerts, um, we, we go big um, and we don't go home, right? We, we take risks. And um, the nice thing I can say is we support our teachers in that. Um, we have some art teachers with some crazy ideas and we think, we think that's brilliant. Um, Mr. Sam Warren, who you can see playing the violin in the, that picture on the top, uh, left. He proposed that we turn our rooftop into a garden um, with uh, like a cafe tables and umbrellas for teachers to eat their lunches and have have gatherings. Um, and we did it. We built it. We um, we plant, put huge planters, um, constructed large planters to go on the roof of the building I'm staring across at now. Um, filled them with flowers and bougainvillea and wisteria and set up cafe tables and now that's our go-to spot for barbecues and um, after collaboration meetings. So we, yeah, I, I think the most beautiful things about our campus are kind of encapsulated in, in that. Um, so what we're looking for, um, if you have listened to this and you have great ideas, you're creative, flexible, collaborative, um, you're ready and willing to improve your craft, um, engage in conversations about um, coaching or, 
uh, self-reflective practice, then, then this is a place for you. And I, I can say you will find great friends um, because this campus, I don't think there is a more welcoming campus in the network and the network is very welcoming. Um, but if you have an idea um, and you have a passion for teaching and a deep knowledge of your subject matter that you want to share with students who are bright and precocious and will challenge you, um, literally, figuratively, you know, they'll they'll make you they'll make you put in your time. Um, then this is this is a great community for you to join. Logi Smeltzer, thank you uh, for sharing such great insights. Um, you've touched on pretty much everything that I have absolutely loved about Guangzhou and the campus <laughs> there and the the beautiful suburban setting that you have. It's a quick, about a 35 minute uh, subway or a DD ride into the heart of the city. Um, the, uh, you know, cuisine. So Guangzhou is, is actually one of the, uh, the, the cuisine capitals of the world. And so if somebody wants uh, any type of cuisine, like you said, it's a, uh, you know, great street food to Michelin star restaurants. And it's not just Chinese cuisine, but it is worldwide cuisine. Yeah, I would also just, I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but our cafeteria is Ooh. hands down the best in the network. Okay, I, I won't, I won't, I won't, this, <laughs> I know there's, this is highly, highly contested, but uh, we had lamb chops the other day, so I don't know, I don't know if anyone can compete with that. So I just, just to, because you mentioned food, and that is one of my passions, <laughs> um, I hadn't mentioned it yet, so I had to, I had to say it now. That is true. That is true. Uh, the cafeteria is known as uh, a great food. I, lo I love what the chef does and, and uh, you know, serving you know, students and faculty. What do you like? You know, what would you want to see more of? And, and uh, he does a phenomenal job of having some great cuisine there at the, at the campus. But I think you've been a little bit modest. You say you only have about a thousand students. You're over a thousand students and uh, you know, you're, you're pushing capacity there. So there's a lot of interest in the school um, that's there. So you know, kudos to you and uh, what you have. One point I um, wanted to add to what you shared about the boarding program. So it's partial boarding. It's five day boarding that you have there, right? Yep. Yeah, so we have our boarders come on Sunday afternoons, evenings, um, and then they leave Friday afternoon. And for those Sundays, we usually have something exciting set up for the kids to do. Um, we've had guest speakers come in and give talks on those days. We've also held basketball competitions, um, got them out and, and exercising during that time or had movie nights. Um, so it is, it is five day boarding starting Sunday night. Um, but of course, like I said, faculty are under no obligation to be there for that time, um, ending Friday evening. Yeah, it's phenomenal. One of the things I've been really impressed with is um, a lot of the success of the extracurricular uh, clubs that you've had. I mean, yeah. the econ team, um, represented China at the Global uh, Economics Challenge uh, in New York City. Uh, they won. They won the Global Challenge. Phenomenal. And that was actually uh, they were uh, um, you know the grade eleven was your your highest grade at the time. So just you know some really smart, phenomenal kids. I think uh, recently had uh, um, kind of swept a couple of categories in the thespian competition. Mm -hmm. So yep. Yep. phenomenal there as well. So. Um, I, mean, I just love a lot of what you guys are doing there. It's a uh, wonderful. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know how many Cubs that we currently have running? I mean, that we were running this year. I don't. You want to guess? I, I'm sure I'd be way off. <laughs> eighty-five. We have eighty-five. Wow. So, uh, yeah. So there's quite, quite. Uh, I, I mentioned passion, right? We have a lot of passionate faculty, but also a lot of passionate students. I mean, a lot of those clubs are student led but with faculty support so um yeah but 85 uh and that's voluntary participation from faculty but all clubs need to have a faculty advisor so that means 85 faculty members have decided that they are willing to support the kids in um pursuing some of their passions so yeah i'm pretty right. pretty proud of it yep and they do it to a very high level so it's great love seeing that great all right well what we'd like to do is um We'll move on to the uh, next part of our presentation. And we're going to hear from Diana Martinez-Yagi, the international recruiter that works specifically with Guangzhou. She'll share some insights on the expat package and uh, some things that are kind of important to know and be aware of in considering an opportunity to face this international schools uh, in Guangzhou and stay with us. So Diana, um, thanks for joining us and I uh, look forward to hearing from you. 
Okay, thank you, Tim. So along with our generous uh, and competitive salary, we provide travel benefits to and from um, chi to and from China at the beginning and end of your contract for you and your family. We also provide a travel allowance once a year that you can use to return home or some of our teachers have used it to travel during the breaks. Actually, two of our teachers um, went to Tibet um, during the summer break. So that was really cool. And they did use that travel um, allowance to do so. Um, we also provide fully furnished housing. So coming over as a single teacher, this can be a studio to one bedroom apartment. If you're coming over as a family, this can be a two to three bedroom apartments, just like Dr. Smeltzer said, you know, they, we welcome families. Um, so you can, are, you can be in a two to three bedroom apartment. And if you're familiar with Guangzhou and you find a location that you love, or if you've lived there before, and then there is the option to obtain a housing stipend. Um, so like Dr. Smeltzer said, you know, she does bicycle um, to and from the school, but we also have a shuttle that goes to and from the campus, um, from the housing to the campus. Um, also health insurance and tuition coverage is provided for you and your family. So the insurance is a global health insurance that you can use within China or when traveling abroad, say like maybe back home or, or maybe say you're going to India or Australia, you can use that health insurance there or like I said, within China. And that within China covers English speaking clinics or VIP hospitals. And the VIP hospitals, I know it sounds fancy, but it is um, something that maybe we're sim that are similar to what you would find in the West. So something we're more familiar with. Um, I was talking about tuition. We do offer tuition benefits for up to two children for a single teacher and up to three if your spouse is teaching with us. So we love um, teaching, uh, teaching families, uh, teaching spouses. Um, that's like great for us because we can kill two birds with one stone, to be honest with you. Um, uh, also, there's a 10% retirement benefit that is paid yearly um, for you to put towards a program of your choice. Uh, since our teachers are coming from all over the world, not everyone is on a 401k or a Roth IRA. So um, we do provide that 10% um, benefit so that you can use it and put it, like I said, towards a retirement um, program of your choice if that suits you best. Um, there's also a completion bonus that's paid up at the end of your contract. And we have a wide, wide network and a great transfer system. So you do have the option to expand your horizons and, and you know, recontract in a different area, or um, maybe, you know, just go to any other campuses in the US, maybe Bangkok or throughout, throughout China. So there is that possibility too. Okay, so that was a short summary of the expat package. I know I went through things quite quickly, but that kind of leads us up into what are we looking for? What are we looking for in our teachers? Um, and something that has been constantly being brought up something that Tim said, Dr. Smelser said, we're looking for teachers who are passionate about teaching and teachers who are experts in their subject. So one of the requirements um, to teach with basis is that you will need to have a degree in, in the subject you teach or at least 24 credit hours. Um, we, do, we do want true experts and we do want those teachers that you know, have that expert knowledge. And like, again, like Dr. Smelser and Tim were saying, um, you know, we want that collaboration with teachers in your department, those, you know, teachers that are, do have that same level of expertise, so you can bounce ideas off them. Um, where are we at now? <laughs> Fashion for teaching. So um, I know, like, also the, for the VC, you'll need two years of full-time teaching experience. Um, also, like, I just keep going back to this, but it is what sets spaces apart. Um, we are looking for those passionate teachers. I keep saying passionate, passionate teachers. It's really true. We want teachers who really nerd out on their subject. Um, so if a teacher's excited about the subject they teach, and their excitement leads over to the students. So, you know, um, I'm sure you guys are very familiar, but say you don't like math, and you're, but you're teaching a math class, and your student comes in, and you say, oh, okay, well, let's do this lesson. Obviously, they're going to really feed off that. They're going to, you know, see that you don't like it, and they too will also dislike that subject. Um, so we do want someone that that has that love and passion, and and just adores their subject and shows the students how great it is, so that they too can be excited about the subject as well, fall up, fall in love with it. So aside from that passion, another word that you'll continuously hear is collaboration. I know that we brought it up um, throughout the webinar today. But we're looking for teachers who have a desire to improve as an educator, someone who thrives on working collaborat collaboratively and building that strong community. 
and you'll be working with colleagues from all over the world and we'll have the ability to learn from each other and really elevate each other. So the cool thing is you can exchange ideas with teachers from different countries, maybe countries you've never even visited or thought of before. Um, so that's really neat and will help you to grow as a teacher. Um, and we don't just exchange ideas um, about our lessons with teachers in our immediate circle or, or our same campus, but across the network. So like, a, an, like we were saying before, we have a, a very wide network. So maybe a teacher who, in, who uploads a, a cool lesson plan in Silicon Valley, um, maybe they will uh, upload their lesson to SharePoint and you yourself can, can also access that lesson plan. Or maybe you had an amazing lesson plan in engineering or whatnot, and you wanna share that, then you can post that as well to um, on SharePoint and then share it with someone in New York or Bangkok or whatnot. Um, so this type of collaboration really makes basis basis, I think. Um, our kids are products of how well we work together. And yes, we do have high standards. We do have high expectations of our students. We want teachers who are willing to put in that extra work, work with their colleagues, work with their students. We, I mean, like Dr. Spolzer was saying, like stay after school, really work with those kids. Um, we look for teachers who are willing to scaffold and help their students meet those high goals. So we can for a teacher who is really looking to put in that extra effort and go the extra mile to support their kids. So we want our students to be lifelong learners. We're looking for teachers who wanna help cultivate, cultivate that passion and love of learning. Some final things to be aware of is that there are some current visa restrictions. Um, things do change. And so we ask that you be flexible as we work through the visa situation um, amongst the ongoing you know, COVID related restrictions. And we know that it can be daunting and maybe, oh, you're nervous or whatnot, but we have an amazing visa team in Guangzhou and at all of our campuses that can help us you know, navigate the whole visa process. Um, the visa team knows the visa restrictions, not only in Guangzhou province, but they'll know like anything to do with certain countries or whatnot, they know everything. So, so we can get you settled and relocated, they will help you um, so you can come with us to China. So then the next thing is that we have mo mostly local students. Um, English is a second language for most of those students. Um, and, and we want you to kind of think about that, that you can't really bring in those um, same ideas that we would have um, here in the States or even in, in Western co uh, countries. Um, things like um, introducing maybe colloquialisms or um, different pop culture things. I mean, because those students are second language learners, it may be difficult for them to understand. Um, so flexibility is very important. Um, and just, I don't know, to me, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would say, you know, flexibility is always important. You know, things uh, evolve and grow. Um, um, and then uh, um, again, as, uh, as, as was discussed, you know, the academics are pretty accelerated. And if you have accompanying students, uh, making sure that they have, uh, uh, that they're prepared and ready uh, for a basis level education. We want to make sure that, uh, you know, opportunity is not only a great fit for you in teaching, but also a good fit for your family and the needs uh, of, of your students. So in terms of some of the broader um, uh, basis network, uh, you know, the basis curriculum schools network is a network of schools that uh, you do use the basis curriculum. So we have nine international and bilingual schools. There are six uh, base independent schools in the United States. And as Diana was talking about, a um, fair bit of um, you know, interaction, collaboration, uh, working through uh, um, you know, those courses and um, insights from different people across the network into um, what you can share and do for some uh, you know, phenomenal insights, to, uh, providing that to students. In terms of the curriculum, um, we really are looking to educate students the highest international levels, uh, really to kind of prepare them to, to, to participate in 21st century global workforce of innovation, commerce, leadership. Um, so in terms of you know, general components of that, and again, it is, it is more accelerated, um, it, uh, it is rigorous, um, but uh, you know, starting off in, in grades, you know, even pre-K through uh, elementary grades of uh, grade four, um, we're really looking to establish that love of learning. We want people to, uh, we want the students to be able to um, really grow to, to, to love and appreciate, you know, the, that, uh, you know, moment of, you know, the light bulb that goes on 
um, you know, the enlightenment that comes from learning, the insights that they develop from being able to uh, learn new things and build that knowledge. As we move into more of the middle school grades, they're kind of enhancing that knowledge to develop that academic mindset. So it's building um, uh, skills and abilities like critical thinking skills and creative problem solving, collaboration, working with peers. And then as you move into the high school grades, it's really developing uh, preparation for university level education. They are taking uh, university or college level courses uh, through the high school grades. And, um, and it really prepares them quite well to, um, to, uh, to move on to university. In terms of results and what that looks like, um, as you can see, we've had uh, over 95% of all of our graduates have been accepted to top 50 global universities, 77% accepted into top 30 universities. You know, uh, examples of some of the universities they are uh, matriculating into include you know, Boston, uh, Carnegie Mellon, Cornell, Duke, Imperial College of London, uh, MIT, uh, Rice, UCLA, uh, University of Chicago, Oxford, Toronto, um, Rhode Island School of Design and other top design and other uh, liberal arts colleges that they've uh, been accepted into. So really great success that students have been able to see in uh, pursuing further education at some phenomenal institutions, um, typically uh, top, top choices um, that, they're, that they're pursuing. As we continue to grow, um, this creates new opportunities for individuals. Uh, we will continue to develop more international and bilingual schools in other cities throughout China, including schools coming up in Beijing, Shanghai, and Tianjin. We'll be adding bilingual schools to uh, cities where we have international schools, uh, cities like Hangzhou and Guangzhou, um, that we're talking about today. And so some of those uh, opportunities, again, as has been mentioned, uh, gives you a chance to take on new, um, new opportunities, new responsibilities, being able to be a founding teacher or a founding administrator within one of the next schools that does open up to bring the basis culture and, uh, and environment to a new location and new campus. Um, again, being able to uh, you know, move on to a different city, a different location, a new experience, and being able to do that within the network is uh, a positive benefit of being a part of the basis of national bilingual schools. All right, with that, we do want to uh, um, uh, get to the end of our presentation. For more insights, we'd really encourage you to um, uh, follow us, not only on our social channels, but we also have uh, some good insights on our career site. Also on the career site, we have links to our blog, as well as the interest list. On our blog, we're sharing uh, a lot of insights, not just about the schools, but more particularly about the experiences that our teachers are having. So teachers have shared insights about what they've done, um, both in their classroom, as well as outside of the classroom, what it's like to live in the particular cities where they are, what it's like to be in China, um, just different aspects, perspectives on what is the experience like, uh, specifically for um, uh, you know, you're working with a basis international or a bilingual school. Um, you can join the interest list. What that does is uh, you'll receive updates on uh, different happenings and events at the schools, uh, developments that are, uh, that are coming up, uh, new schools that are opening, uh, positions that we have open up across the schools. And, um, just kind of stay updated on uh, what's happening with the Basis International Schools Network. With that, we will get to our um, uh, Q&A portion of, uh, of our webinar. So uh, Diana, I think you've been uh, tracking some of the questions. So if you'd like to um, share some insights on uh, some of the questions and then uh, Dr. Smelter, I think uh, you know, some of those may be a little bit more specific to your campus, uh, which are look to, to your insight and experience with the schools as you've been with uh, multiple campuses as well. So, uh, Diana, uh, any uh, key questions that, uh, that you have? Yes, there are a few that came up. So one of them was, do you recruit English teachers mainly from the United States or teachers from both native and non-native countries? So basically, do you have teachers only from the US that are teaching at your campus? Uh, no, so we have quite a diverse campus. We have people from, all areas of the world. Um, I think the one thing for English specifically, um, fluency is really important. I mean, Diana, you mentioned our, our students are primarily Chinese as their first language. Um, they're coming to English as their second language, but they are highly proficient. So we do map testing um, across kinder through eighth grade and our kids as a rule are on average at or above the US um, average for all reading and language usage 
skill sets and some skill sets. So um, they're highly proficient and we need uh, a fluent instructor with really deep knowledge of the language to teach them um, in, in English, especially at the middle and high school levels. Um, of course, we have teachers from all countries who have attained that type of fluency, um, but that is the major requirement. <clears throat> One thing that I may just add to that is, you know, China does have some requirements. If you're teaching English as your subject, then they do require that you, you do come from a, a native English speaking country. Um, so that is one of the uh, um, you know, parameters that, uh, that China does have in terms of issuing visas for English teachers coming from an English speaking country is a requirement mm -hmm. of that particular piece. But I think- um, it But not just the US, we also have, you can get from the UK or- Correct. Um, yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah, not, not just the US, of course. Um, it seems like one of the last numbers I saw, and this has been maybe a, a year or two, but um, we had uh, teachers coming from 46 different countries. Uh, the last different report that I had seen um, in the Kadwa, uh, across uh, across the uh, the broader basis network within China. Cool. We have, we have a few more questions. So one is, what supports are in place for teachers to learn the basis curriculum? So, so we have, yeah. I mean, Tim, do you want to cover that one, or do you want me to cover that one? Yeah, go ahead and and uh, share some of the insights on what you've seen specifically within in your campuses. Yeah. So. Um, there's for new people joining the basis network, there's a summer institute um, and that's basically a, a week long um, training in addition to whatever on site training you will do. Um, this coming year, it might be a little shorter because we're trying to give people time to go home and come back before the school year starts. But in general, it's a, it's a week long training and it supports teachers and kind of learning all of the basis ins and outs, um, but it also connects them to their curriculum and primarily their chairs. So the, the chair of your subject area on your campus um, <clears throat> will be the go-to person to support you with your knowledge of the curriculum. The curriculum is um, the same across all basis campuses. So those outlines, topics, goals, um, the depth to which each topic needs to be taught, that's common across all campuses. Um, and there are, of course, people who are well-versed in um, those grade levels and those subject areas who you can go to for support. Um, your chair is your point person for that though, and they will kind of guide you and develop you in that process. They are all at the Summer Institute to work specifically with new teachers joining their subject area. Um, and then on on-site training, that will continue as you work with your larger, su larger subject group um, kind of faculty within your PLCs or within your subject area meetings. Um, and we do have um, support from, you know, I, I think you saw the map of five or six different schools in China that are teaching the same curriculum, but the same student body. Um, so we have a lot of people who have worked for years um, to develop really strong strategies in addressing, uh, addressing needs in various subject areas for our specific student body. Okay. So, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so what kind of other like ongoing PD or personal development do you have for your teachers? Yeah, so we have um, PLCs. So all teachers are asked to be a part of a, a professional learning community in the school. Um, that does not have to be restricted by division or by subject area. Um, it is by teacher choice. Um, and those teachers work to address um, and take action in a specific area of their practice or the, the learning environment. Um, in addition to that, every Thursday, we have collaborative time as a school. So kind of it's, everybody puts down what's their, what they're doing. No, we don't run clubs at that time. We don't run student hours at that time. Um, it's a time for teachers to meet and work with each other on what needs to be done. Um, it's also time where divisions will organize um, division specific PD if there's anything that um, they've identified that needs, that needs to take place. There's also network wide collaboration during that, those Thursdays, the second Thursday of every month, the whole network, um, all chairs get together across the network in their specific areas to talk about issues that they're facing in English or in history or in science. Um, and all heads of division of work together during that time as well. So that's 
kind of network-wide collaboration time where the whole basis network across China puts everything down and just works on um, get, getting back best practices from the person that's closest by. Um, in addition to that, we do um, two or three professional learning days a year where the students don't come in. Um, this is you know, common, most, most schools do have this practice. And we have professional learning um, for our faculty during those days that can either be network or organized or school organized. This year we're having um, one that's organized by the school and one that's organized by the network. All right, cool. And I know that you touched on it a little bit earlier, um, but do you follow the IB <laughs> program or is it solely a basis curriculum that you stick with? We offer the basis curriculum and we do AP. Um, there's another one. So what type of ELL support is available and what, I know you were talking about the English ability of the students is higher, but what kind of ELL support is available mm -hmm. for those that are not uh, competing at the uh, of at course the I mean level. like like any like any community of learners you have you have um kids who are on very various points on their path um and we do have some students who are at risk in, in literacy and we have a team of ELL um experts to support them um that team I think we have about seven or eight right now so it's a it's a decently sized team um, and they do either push in or pull out depending on the age of the students. So um, we do a lot of direct interventions so pull outs with our younger students. Um, and that will either be by their learning, uh, their LET or by the ELL faculty members. In the older grades, um, we offer specific ELL courses for those who are very high risk. So we have an additional English class for them um, to do some you know, ELL specific um, intervention with the topics that we're not able to cover in, in you know, ninth grade English um, to support those kids. And additionally, in the older, older grades, we have people who push in. So for example, I teach ninth grade English. Um, my excellent <coughs> colleague in ELL, sorry, <laughs> pushes into my classroom four out of five days a week. So she's there teaching alongside me. Sorry. <clears throat> Bad time for cold. Oh, th thank you. Thank you for that. No, Dr. Smeltzer, like you said earlier, you she came in with a fever yesterday. She's been working so hard. So look at her, like really putting on this webinar and, and look at how much love she has for basis. I mean, I remember when I first started, um, my, one of my heads of school says, Diana, you will eat, sleep, and breathe basis yeah, once you get into, into this, um, into, into being with us. And so I, it really is true. You truly fall in love with basis. I didn't, you know, I, I'm from Arizona, but I never thought like, oh yeah, I, I, would, I would love basis this much. And I really, I really do. Just like Eric. Yeah. No, said. Yeah. If I can, if I can make it through my sentence. I just wanted, oh no, I can't, I'm, I'm losing my voice. I'm going to tap out for this one. That's okay. There, there were just some um, questions about from people that were asking, um, you know, when are we going to be um, recruiting for Guangzhou? When is the due date for the applications or whatnot? So please, like, like Tim had mentioned in the last slide, like, please contact us. Um, you know, we are looking through applications. We are um, conducting uh, screenings and sending them over to the school. So yes, like if you're interested, please send them over. Um, look, find us on on um, any of the Shroll or tests or whatnot. And go ahead and, and check us out and, and send through your application. I'd love to see it. I would, I would add to that. Um, we are very actively um, hiring right now positions. So um, yeah, if, if uh, you're interested, um, uh, apply sooner than later um, and definitely get us your information. Apply again directly through our career site. Uh, I'll move this back. Our career site is jobs.basisinternationalschools.com and uh, that'll, that'll get, that will get your information right directly to uh, the recruiter working with a specific school and uh, we work across the full network. So you can be considered for positions across all of our schools by applying through our career site and um, uh, the sooner the better, because we have uh, filled a good number of positions 
Uh, we still have some that we're working on. So uh, I would just uh, mention that a uh, bit of urgency on that particular topic. All right, and thank you everyone. I swear it's the first time I've been sick in two full calendar years, uh, but there, there, there you go. That's, that's the way the cookie crumbles. But it's been, it's been lovely talking to you guys and sharing about my school. And I hope to talk to you guys soon, um, hopefully maybe in a few days when I've, I've fully recovered. <laughs> Great. Well, Dr. Smelter, again, thank you so much for uh, for joining us uh, today. We appreciate it. Great insights and um, love seeing what's uh, going on with the school there in Guangzhou. And look forward to seeing uh, you know, continued great successes as well. Thanks, Tim. All right. Take care. And again, everybody, thanks for joining us today. Um, we've had people joining us from uh, multiple places throughout the world. So thanks for joining us. And uh, if you wanted to review uh, the webinar. We will also share that out to um, uh, our YouTube channel as well as other social media. So thanks for joining us tonight, uh, today or this morning, depending on where you are. And I look forward to uh, seeing your applications. Thanks, everybody. Take care.